Wow, welcome back to M Hood Fishing. What a dirty, mucky looking spot. Sometimes it's clear and clean, less garbage to no garbage, but it is looking horrible this afternoon. This is the day after the full moon. Yeah, I had some friends that went out and fished yesterday and their reports were kind of grim. Yeah, little something here and there, but not good. So I stayed in because it was the Sabbath. I did a lot of other things, observance, whatever, but I won't get into that. Anyway, here we are in the afternoon. It's not too late, it's not too early. Might end up doing something else later, but I wanted to see if I could catch something, you know, possibly to use as bait later. Very calm, kind of breezy, not a lot of fish activity. I have seen stuff break the water, right as I like rode up into here on the bike I did see that but unfortunately it was turtles so no reason no call to get excited there let's see what we can do under the cork with worm because I don't really see artificials being super productive we might give that a try though but let's just see if we can get something on a bit of red worm it is a Sunday afternoon it is quite a warm one too along with being breezy like i said before look at my hand there let me get it out of your way so i'm just gonna sit here lazy like because it's sunday really warm actually that's kind of why i decided to just sit here in the shade because it's really warm things are going to change there's an arctic blast changing things as we speak but not quite here yet by the end of this week, perhaps, it will be, and we'll be seeing temps in the 40s. Not expecting much, but could get surprised here. Oh! There we go. Yeah, you're right. That is not quite what I'm after. I know you can't see it because we're in the shade, but that is a little cichlid. Could be just all cichlids right here, but ah, uh, there's so much scum. It's so thick that on that particular cast, the worm did not even get past it. It just laid on top of it. We might get out of this forsaken spot here because it's yucky. Ugh. Like I was trying to say, it might be all cichlids. That's another little cichlid. That's bougie stuff. Looks like someone puked on the water surface. It's not so thick over on this side. So we're gonna come underneath here. Fish right in front of this culvert here. Maybe we can get our worm to sink because I'm not using any lead on the line. It's just a weighted cork. Yeah, the worm got through there. Perhaps if I did put split shot on my line under the cork, my hook would go in. Boom, had a bite there, but I'm not one to do that. I usually prefer my bait, my bait to sink naturally in the water column underneath the cork. There we go. What do we got? Something bigger. Again, cichlid. I'm gonna give this spot one more try. And if we pull up another cichlid, I'm gonna go check out another spot. Whoa, there we go. That is not a cichlid. It's a little small to use for bait for me for right now, for the moment. So in the last video, it sounded like 
the next video would be Ray and I going on an adventure. And we did. I recently did a 24 hour stint. I was unable to get any sleep. I had work to do. That was a cichlid right there. So I did a session on the ICW. Ray was there. I did other things after that. Shot a fan mail video and was supposed to meet Ray at 4 a.m. So I'd woke up around one something that day. Another cichlid. Got out to the ICW, did that video with Ray, shot a fan mail video where I read a cool letter by John, and we drove down river to look for jacks. And I spent a fair amount of time doing that. There were jacks that I occurred that I found occurring down there, but I could not get them to hit the spoon. And I tried other things. So it was a failed endeavor, no video. Afterwards, I, I got a little bit of sleep, right? And I woke up in the middle of the night after about five hours of sleep, and I just felt hungover. I don't drink, right? I've been sober for almost a year. Come up, Coming in December, it'll be a year, about December 18th, something like that. It'll be a year. But, yeah, I just felt horrible. Today, I feel good. Sometimes being awake for 24 hours just with a little bit of caffeine and a lot of willpower can take it out of you, especially when you get to my age. Okay, that took all our bait. The way I put, I put it all back, it's just good food and trying to get some good sleep. And here we are catching little BS panfish and other things. I think once we get to the rise of the full moon this afternoon, which should be soon. I know yesterday was the full moon, but it's going to be about the same effect today. It's going to be full. But once we get there, once it starts to rise over the horizon, I predict that the bite is going to go downhill, probably right into the dumpster. So what I want to do is take care of one thing. And to take care of that, I have to leave here because it's difficult to take care of it here because this is thick in the neighborhood. So right now, we're kind of high up on this bayou, sort of. We're not going very far. We're not going all the way to the end because that's quite a ways away. But we're going to go from this little tiny pumping station all the way to a bigger one where I can take care of the call of nature. And we'll see if we can take care of hitting some gills other than just one cichlid after another. Let's get on the road. There's not much of a bite here. So instead of wasting time, let's go to other spots and waste the time there. There is definitely a bite here. I'm getting a lot of bites. Whoa, finally, I had to come up on top of them. I might actually do something different. There we go. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. I don't think you guys saw that. We, <clears throat> we had a rabbit. At least I'm out of the sun because it is quite crisp. It is warm. And I think the fish have the same idea. Here in a little bit, the mosquitoes will have the same idea as well because I'm sure they're going to be thick. But we have a little bit of time. There is a possibility of doing something with a vampire, but I don't think he's awake. He was awake and then he went back to sleep. Gotcha. Okay, we got an idea of where they're hanging out. See where the branch is coming down there? About 
in that area if not a little bit bit in front of it so far it's all been panfish no cichlids which is good this guy's just a little too small here you go upside down view lots of hits down here lots of little hits so stripping stripping my hooks here you can see where our water line used to be on this bayou for the longest time and now it's down where i'm standing we just haven't had a lot of rain lately but for a while they've been keeping this bayou low keeping it pumped down low look how high up the water line used to be you can see that look at that chimney all the way up there gotcha oh yes oh ho, ho. whoa that is that is a tank yeah can jews eat fish with cheese according to wikipedia it is habad custom to refrain from eating fish with milk but combining fish with dairy byproducts is acceptable Okay, that one's too small for what my brain is working on. Nice. Ah. Yeah. That does not qualify for what my brain is working on. Still, again, too small. For a good while, this spot was... A lot of fun because one bite after another right but <laughs> definitely not one hookup after another and now it's just like one tiny little cichlid one little real grand cichlid after another did keep some bait out of here got some food out of here now but i might be getting out of here now unless this is a nice fish that's biting crisp still the mosquitoes are starting to come out and yeah, maybe we'll go to another spot maybe we'll go to a kitchen i don't know one more spot i tried over here where this meets the bayou way too windy so we're going to deal with the puke on the surface by this point you might be confused. You were probably confused from the get-go with the title of this video. That's because I didn't start this session with a working title. I just come out to get some bait, right? But now, now it's become something different. It's a catch and cook now. And the title is, Is This a Kosher Catch and Cook? Some of you may know what kosher is, but a lot of you is like, what is kosher? Okay, so that was a cichlid we just got. Throw him over here on the bank. So, kosher is according to Leviticus in the Old Testament. A lot of Jews only eat kosher food. Muslims do something similar, but they don't call it kosher, call it challah. Everything has to be done a certain way. Now, Orthodox Jews go hardcore with their kosher. So, technically... Oh, here we go. Something better. Oh, I let go. Technically, this is probably not going to be a kosher catch and cook. Catch and cook. Catch and cook. But, probably really, really close. So, in Leviticus, it says that you can't eat fish... That don't have fins and scales right that would be like catfish you can't eat catfish according to Leviticus because they don't have scales can't eat eel and in Leviticus it says that you can't eat shellfish that would be like crabs and shrimp and clams and oysters so that big cichlid 
under the bridge that I got. That is a kosher fish because, here we go, it has scales. Oh, that is a kosher fish as well. Kosher for bait. Yeah, you're right. We're going to use that to catch maybe a non-kosher fish. So, I know my fish that I'm going to eat is kosher, but my kitchen is not. Just so you know. If you're curious, I am not Jewish at all. I just have a deep interest in all kinds of different things. Theology is one of the things I've always enjoyed studying, along with political science and you know anthropology and archaeology. Love those topics. Theology is the study of religion. I've studied Judaism pretty deep, like way before the current conflict, so it's just a coincidence. So I'm not like doing this because of the conflict. However, because of the conflict, I've been doing a lot more deep dives on more political science topics around, that is another cyclic, around that region more than usual. Usually it's just like I'm looking into mysticism. That's what I've been interested in lately is Jewish mysticism, Christian mysticism, and Islamic mysticism, such as the Sufis. I find it just, you know, very interesting. So I've been looking into kosher stuff lately. Oh, here we go. No, no, we don't. You might be wondering why I asked Google that question. Well, because I know for a fact, I was told this recently, actually many years ago, but recent, you know, relatively recently, by Benny Nagy, who owns and runs Mardi Gras Zone, shout out to you, that Jews can't eat cheeseburgers because I asked him if, if he uh, likes cheeseburgers. And he said, you can't, can't eat them because... In Leviticus, it says you should not eat the mother with the child. So, in Leviticus, you know, or in Jews in general, they consider the milk of the cow or whatever animal you're getting the milk from. They don't, you know, in some countries it might be from dogs because there, there are, there is a country where they like dog milk, but it's not Israel. They don't drinking dog milk. But anyway. The milk is considered of the child, right? So, dairy products are included in that. So you cannot have like a, a roast beef po' boy with cheese, cheeseburgers, because you're combining the mother with the child. Because the meat is of the mother, and the dairy products, the milk is of the child, right? And they also, it's the same thing with chicken. You, you can't mix cheese with chicken. And I, and I know that doesn't make sense because chickens don't have milk, but I actually Googled that the other day because I was curious. I was like, hey, this is something I don't know about. Here's another cichlid right here. Swinging in, cichlid swing. There we go. Bobbing up and down. It's a bungee cord cichlid swing. Well, yeah, you can't have chicken and cheese biscuits. But, you know... Where do you get the milk from on a chicken? I don't know. Maybe I don't want to know. So I was curious about fish and milk. Fish and like cheese to be precise. So just so you know, I'm in, I was planning on telling you in the kitchen, but I'm talking right now, so I might as well tell you now. Because, you know, you're confused. You're thinking, well, maybe you're not confused now, but you're assuming that I'm going to whip up some kind of Jewish recipe, right? I am not. I'm not whipping up a Jewish recipe. Recipe. I asked the question because we are doing fish with dairy products, right? That's the main question. That's why we have that question anyway. Oh, do we have a fish here? We're getting a bite like crazy down here. Yes. 
There are so many cichlids in here, most of them way too small to eat. The main question, however, is, is this a kosher catch and cook? Because maybe it's debatable. It might be debatable. There might be some Jews that are like, oh, that, that's passable. That'll work. There might be other Jews that are like, you know, they'll point out certain things that I'll talk about later that have to do with the kitchen, the cookery, the utensils and everything that might make it not kosher in the fact that I'm not Jewish. Even if there is a mezuzah on the door. Look at that. Another cichlid swing for you. There's a lot of these in here. I kind of take that back. It very well could be a Jewish recipe. Because one thing you got to consider is that Jews are not just a religion. Judaism is a religion, but Jews are also an ethnic group. And Jews are all over the world inside all different cultures. So what we're going to whip up in the kitchen very well could be maybe just a tad bit off, but very well could be just right on the target or just very close a Jewish recipe maybe maybe not but hopefully it's good come on here we are in my non-kosher kitchen if I was a Jew that would be not enough to make this a kosher kitchen not at all that's because it only has one of everything one stove one sink one refrigerator there's no dishwasher but if it did it would need two dishwashers two sinks two ovens two refrigerators getting ahead of myself here two pantries two sets of cutteries two sets of cookery two sets of everything crockery that's because you got to keep everything separate from the meat yeah you're right i mean even your frying pan, you have one for meat and one for everything that's not meat. And you got to keep your vegetables separate from all that. So this is not a kosher kitchen. And it is really possibly way too small to even go there. However, we could knock out kosher food, food in this kitchen. But it would not exactly be kosher. We could buy all kosher products, which tend to be expensive. And then we would have kosher food. So we can get really, really close to it, but not exactly over target, not on the money. Yeah, you're right. So there are Christians, Orthodox Christians, that follow Leviticus. They have a Leviticus diet. Yeah, you're right. So for you Christians that are just, you know, maybe Catholic or Protestant or something else in this country or perhaps another country, you're not Orthodox, think of what Yeshua you're like, who's that? That's Jesus. Yeshua. Think of what he would eat because he was Jewish. So he definitely had a Leviticus diet because he grew up reading the Old Testament, reading the Torah. Same thing, right? So yeah, you're right. This is kind of like, not only is this a kosher catch and cook, is this a Yeshua, a Jesus catch and cook? Would Jesus eat this with me? Probably. Maybe. Maybe not, but it would be close. Maybe we need a different kitchen. I actually went to Walmart in the middle of this. I just got back. Okay, what am I looking for? Most of my utensils are in one drawer. I would need two of these and kept in different places. There's my knife sharpener. And here's my fillet knife someone sent to me thank you very much i like it a lot i only use this for fish however i might use it for meat sometimes however it's kept with everything so that takes us a bit further from kosher let me do this i end up buying a lot of kosher products without really thinking about it a lot of the things in my kitchen are kosher but they were not purchased because they are kosher such as these cheap 
little snack things here. They're kosher. You can tell when something's kosher or, you know, just by like certain things like a circle with a U, a circle with a K, or like this. I got these at Walmart, macaroons. That's a classic Jewish thing right there anyway, but I happen to like them a lot. And they're kosher. And they're made by Walmart. Sunbelt Bakery. Little Debbie puts these out. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I went to my local store and I had a craving for macaroons. They did not have them, but this is really close. Fudge, dipped, coconut bars, and look at that. Yeah, you're right. So you're probably wondering, why did they write all these crazy dietary rules in Leviticus? There's a lot more than dietary rules in Leviticus, by the way. And you're probably guessing that it's one of my favorite books in the Torah or the Old Testament, however you want to look at it. And you are correct, it is. Probably my most favorite. So, I would say that it's a mix of common sense, practicality, and superstition. This is supposed to be God telling you what he wants you to eat and how he wants you to eat and other things. But you got to think about, think about it. It was written thousands of years ago. Leviticus was the Old Testament, the Torah. And this is in Israel where this was written in the desert. Long time ago. No refrigeration. No AC. No running water. So a lot of the rules that are in Leviticus about diet, what to eat and not what to eat, is pretty common sense for that time when you consider that there's not a lot of food preservation, right? Preserving food. So, of course, back then you probably had a lot of people falling sick and dying from eating things you would think is, are safe to eat these days, like shellfish, shrimp, crabs, and that sort of thing. And pork, you know, you're not, Leviticus says you're not supposed to eat pork, and it says because of the hooves, but it was probably just a very unclean meat, and if you didn't keep it right, it spoiled and it made people sick. It probably gave them worms and things like that back then. So, also in Leviticus, it says you should not eat things that crawl on its belly because it's you know, evil of, of the devil or something like that. Something to that, right? So you got some superstitions, right? About this, about why you shouldn't eat this with that or mix this with that. I like some of the uh, Leviticus dietary rules and some of it I find a little, a little much, but I have to understand. I always have to stop myself and remind myself written thousands of years ago if you remember back to when I was under the bridge and I asked Google if you could eat fish with cheese if you were Jewish right and it said that you shouldn't mix fish with milk however if it's a byproduct of milk such as cheese and it did list cheese there that you could eat them together or cook them together but remember it said that you might want to serve it separate but you could serve it together kind of confusing I think what we will do is we will cook it separate instead of cooking it together you don't even know what I'm cooking yet but trust me it should be good there we go we got two little fillets because even though it was a big cichlid, and the, as far as things go, it was a little fish. But that's enough for me. We're adding it to something. I've actually got a little bit of cooking to do before I cook my fish. We're going to add some of this Italian seasoning. And look right there. Cheapest generic Italian seasoning at that place has that there on it. Meaning it is good to go. So, so far, so good, but yeah, again, <laughs> we're just getting as close as kosher as we 
can tonight because we are in the wrong kitchen and I'm not even Jewish. So I think I want to do both sides, right? And I might add a little, yeah, let's add a little something else, but that might take us away. We'll see. Let's grab it. He's not taking us anywhere because got a star with a K. And look at this. This is really cool. You got a triangle with an H. And it's hard to read it, but it says holla. So, whichever your boat floats, whichever way it floats, we're good to go here. But yeah, you're right. We're going to do a little bit of this seafood magic on both sides. It's a little bit. Ooh, that was kind of crazy, but what house are we in we're in the hood house so that probably wasn't that crazy nice all right both of my seasonings are kosher and we're gonna put my cichlid in the refrigerator which is not kosher totally not kosher because the light bulb burned out and i forgot to get one at the store but we got milk we got butter and all kinds of stuff oh we don't have any meat down in here. The meat's up there. And these three products right here may just like totally blow us out of the water, take us miles and miles away from kosher. Because we were already miles and miles away from actually kosher cooking. Because like I said, this is not a kosher kitchen. And I am not Jewish. Not at the moment anyway. So here we go. Louisa right ravioli four cheese right all right sounds like it could be kosher but it does not have any jewish any kosher association here just nothing back here that indicates that no symbol no words no nothing all right so here we go organic roasted garlic spaghetti sauce pasta sauce sounds like it could be kosher right now there might be vegetables in here that aren't considered kosher i don't know why but there is no affiliation back here but on the face of it, it sounds like it could be kosher but there's no affiliation there's there's no jews associated with this as far as the labeling goes right so i used to think that garlic because someone told me back before the internet i used to think that garlic because they said garlic isn't kosher because it grows underground but i believe it is I don't know what the deal is what well, there's definitely no meat in this and there's no dairy products in that here we go this you would think that this is safe to eat maybe if you're reformed maybe a reformed jew or in a lot of orthodox christians would eat these three things right here this extra virgin olive oil does not have any associations let me let me read something to you this is all these countries this is a product of it's not just one it's a product of Italy, Spain, Tunisia, Turkey, Morocco, and or Argentina. It can't make up its mind. It may or may not be a product of Argentina. So it's a mix. It's a mix. So this, this may take us as far. I mean, like it may double or triple our distance that we were from being kosher tonight. But if we just like curled up in the bed with this right here, we'd probably be like, you know, very kosher but i need more than that i'm not gonna just eat all that it's tempting those are addictive big pan little pan you know what this one's for not the fish that'll be the fish because it's a little pan so we can get a little heat here a little heat the pan is warm enough to put some of this in there not too much maybe just a hair more yeah it, that's about right right there just a bit of olive oil i like the extra virgin see not everything in my house has to be kosher well i'm because i'm not jewish I'm, i don't you know i'm not even orthodox but there's a lot of products that are and they tend to be really really good kosher products usually like these you wouldn't think but they are these are awesome and they're not too expensive either You remember earlier when I was talking to you at the pumping station and I said there are Jews everywhere in the world so therefore what I'm cooking tonight 
may be close to a Jewish recipe somewhere. Obviously, this meal is of an Italian theme, right? Lots of Jews and Muslims as well in Italy. But Jews have a huge history in Italy. You might be familiar with a Shakespeare story. You may have seen it as a movie. The Merchant of Venice. Yeah. Jews have been in Italy for a long time. When I was growing up in Texas, I was exposed to Jews and Judaism. Not as much as when I went to New York. I, I ran away from Texas and everything because it was not good at the time. When I was 17 and I lived in New York, I lived in New York for all of my 20s. So I met a lot of Jews there. I had a lot of Jewish girlfriends and I had a lot of really good friends, good Jewish friends. I hung out with rabbis and in synagogues. I was at Shabbat a lot. The first time I ever had kosher Chinese food was when I was hanging out with this rabbi and we were talking about you know Yahweh we're talking about God and all these other things you know like a class but there's food it was awesome it was, for, it was amazing Chinese food couldn't believe it was kosher there was this one Jew the songwriter singer that I remember from Texas when I was growing up that I really liked a lot Icky Twerp yeah you're right like country and western singer from Texas. Icky Twerp. I just like saying his name as well. Fun, fun musician as well. Good music. I said I had some time to cook. That's why I put that in the refrigerator because those, even though I set them out a while ago, they were still frozen. So that's why I have a low heat right now to thaw them and like slow cook, slow thaw because they're kind of pre cooked already, right? Don't want to boil those for too long or you, you end up having the cheese come out and you have the water you're going to drain off is going to be milky white with bits of pepper in it and you're going to be upset so once these get thawed we'll just add this a few minutes later i bet we're ready yes we do not want this to actually fry we got a bit of a sizzle going here we are a good good ways along here with the thawing but if it's not fully thawed, like I still see some bits that are probably not. So we're going to add just a bit of this sauce. Let's toggle the camera down so we can all see what M Hood is doing. Just a bit. I have this on a three, it's an electric range, right? So that's over medium right now, that heat. Let me have my wooden spatula. This wooden spatula is not kosher because it's been used for meat dishes and vegetarian and vegan dishes because I don't eat meat every day. I don't eat a lot of meat anyway. I went to the store yesterday late in the evening right before they closed because I wanted to treat myself. It was Saturday. We all know what that means. It was Sabbath, right? So I wanted to treat myself. If I was orthodox anything, I probably wouldn't even be going into the store on a Saturday, but I'm not. So I went over there and I wanted to get some meat. I wanted some all beef sausage, right? So now that we have everything danced around in our sauce, let's close the lid and continue the story. So I wanted some all beef sausage and there wasn't too much of a choice there. I don't eat pork. I've had trouble trying to like you know stay clean off of pork there's a lot of reasons why i don't eat pork but there was one name brand like big brand right that's in every store across the nation that was all beef and then there was one that is more local to us and it said beef but not all beef it was actually pork casein so i danced away from that and then i started reading the label on the uh, i think it was what Pepperidge Farms or one of those or Eckerd's or something. Anyway, I was reading the label and I was like, man, I don't want meat with high fructose corn syrup. It had high fructose corn syrup in it. I'm trying to keep that out of my diet. I'm an older guy, I'm getting older, and I don't really like eating stuff that's got a ton of that in it. You know, maybe the uh, the Sunbelt 
things over there that I bought earlier. They might have it in there, but yeah, I don't want everything in my kitchen to have that. Be, you know, it's a meat product, and before the you get to the meat ingredient, you're going through all these like names you can barely pronounce, and high fructose corn syrup is one of them. So I was like, what do I get? So I went over to the hot dog section, and I was like, let's see if something here that will fit my bill tonight. So there were two things that would, would work for me that were all beef there in the hot dog section. I had Nathan's, and I had Hebrew Nationals. Nathan's is an all beef hot dog but it doesn't have any kosher or jewish affiliation labels on it but it's all beef no high fructose corn syrup in it at all right so that fits the bill perfectly right so i looked at the hebrew nationals same thing over there all beef no high fructose corn syrup but the difference is you pay a lot more for less meat getting the Hebrew Nationals than you do the Nathans. Now, I want to treat myself, but stay within my means. It's a bit of a splurge to get the Nathans, but a little more... I was just like, man, I really would like to get the Hebrew Nationals, but I'm getting less hot dogs for a few dollars more than if I just get the Nathans, and it's about $5 and some change for that pack, right? I tell you what, I got the Nathan's, and I don't regret it. It was awesome. I had it, first, you know, I had like a a, a multi-course meal. I had some of these, and then relaxed, you know, I had a, a meal of these with this sauce. And then a little bit later, I was like, I'm ready for hot dogs. And I made the hot dogs. I, I cooked them in a little bit of olive oil. And then I had sauerkraut and black olives and just a little bit of pita bread with it and, you know, spicy mustard. Perfect. I was happy. You should treat yourself on a weekend. If you don't treat yourself every day, treat yourself at least on the weekend with something. I am going to turn the heat down on this and just let it simmer for a good while. Time to turn the heat on somewhere else little pan needs to get warmed up i'm gonna start just a little over medium i would consider five to be medium here six medium high so we're at a four on this put a little bit of oil i think we're getting there you hear that if you listen carefully, you can hear the sizzle. You have to be real careful, actually, with cooking. Yeah, you hear that sizzle now? You gotta be careful cooking cichlid. It is a decent fish, but you can easily ruin yourself on it. If you don't know what you're doing and you overcook that, you may never try eating this again when you catch them. It's easy to overcook this particular fish. You know, open the unkosher drawer. The reason why it's super easy to overcook this is because it's not an oily fish. Oily fish won't dry out as fast, but fish that have less oil in the meat, they dry out faster. And there's quite a few fish like that out there. That's why I prefer to cook this on a, a lower heat below medium just about and not rush it but pay attention once it's white it's probably okay it's probably good to go and we're we're getting there the tops and bottoms of this fish look white and you would think it's done but you got to look at the edge and you'll see that it's not we're getting there now i know little fillets not much of a meal right there this is just an extra little bit of added protein to our carbohydrates over here we're super close we're just about there i turned the heat off totally there with that yep we're there
that actually looks really pretty that does in fact look pretty might be several miles several miles from being a kosher meal however it's right there for being a healthy meal even though i didn't add vegetables to this there's some in the sauce right but we have an organic sauce here we have ravioli they don't have too many bad things in them because they're not organic the fish that's fairly organic but there might be some bad things in that fish given where we caught it at but it's probably okay and we cook this with a few eh, some kosher products yeah you're right so how does it taste let me find out and i'll tell you Okay, I got a piece of ravioli, I got a piece of fish. We're gonna do a combo bite here. Hopefully it don't burn the heck out of my tongue. Oh. Hmm. I don't know if it's kosher, but dang it sure is copacetic. It tastes like Italian food to me. I bet Maybe a, a, a Hasid would not eat this with me, or a Hadim, but we're about the same, those two things right there, Hasid, Hasidic Jews and Hadim. An Orthodox Jew may not sit down and eat this with me. Some Orthodox Christians might sit down and eat this with me. Conservative Jews may or may not. Reformed Jews probably would not have a problem with this meal at all. And I'm sure most of you guys don't have a problem with it either. And neither do I. Because it is delicious. And I need to get in the other room and consume it. So let me do this. Mm. I hope you learned something. And I want to say this. Thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. And I will see you next time.